can't think about anything else because it's right there. That's all you're thinking about. That's what, um, that's how like being an alcoholic or an addict is. I just cannot wait to get it. And like once you get it, for me, you know, it was a drink, like everything is going to be okay. Narcan. No, no, yeah, it's, it's coming. Bring her back like that. Hurry up! Come on, man. She's like, you're going. Like, she's trying to breathe. Two more things. Two more things. Two more things. Two more things. She did have a pulse and she was, she was, uh, yeah, she was gargling and okay, trying to breathe. I think her brother started it first. She was—he was on the phone with somebody, I guess 911. And then the lady ran up. I don't even know where she went. She ran up and said she knew CPR. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. Hey, For about a year and a half, I've lived with a violent alcoholic. I've seen the pain firsthand of the struggle he went through to try to get clean. Our team set out to better understand the nature of addiction, and in turn, perhaps we can aid those who are in need of recovery. When it comes to alcoholism and drug addiction, the issue is ignorance. To guide others to sobriety, we need to first understand three things about these addictions. What it is, how it affects us, and how we can help. Many of us do not understand or have presuppositions about addiction. We interviewed two recovering addicts, Taya Smith on the left, a recovering alcoholic, and Cliff Bailey on the right, a recovering drug addict. We asked them to share a little bit about their lives, how they started, and what it actually feels like to be an addict. Well, I think that society right now doesn't, um, doesn't educate themselves about it, and they're very naive, and they just, they think, um, because they don't understand, they think that we can just quit or we could just stop and, and if we could do that, we would. I remember the first time that I drank, I must have been 13 years old, but my drinking really didn't take off until 2004, I would say. A lot of times, or most of the time, I would drink until I would black out and it was never my intention to black out, but I'd always miss the mark. I'd always have fun, like, you know, for the first two or five drinks and something would happen where I'd black out and I wouldn't even remember continuing to drinking. Uh, I knew I was a severe alcoholic and I was so depressed and so upset with myself that I was a bad mom and a bad wife that I thought that you and your dad would be better off if I was dead because I didn't know how to not drink anymore. Well, that goes into my next question. How many times have you overdosed? When you're meaning like intentionally overdose. Yeah, um, like the pills. Pills. I believe from my medical records, I had tried to kill myself 12 times in 10 years and every one of them I end up in ICU. What pills would you overdose on? Sleeping pills, pain pills, and muscle relaxers. What's common for alcoholics or addicts to be um, addicted to multiple things, whether it's um, sex and gambling, sweets, food, whatever. We, we have usually multiple addictions. And the disease, because addiction is a disease, goes full circle. The disease causes you to feel the way you do, to feel shame, feel guilt, 
um, demoralized because of your actions, but then the disease lies to you and tells you that, it, that it's what you need to feel better and to cope with those feelings, only to then feel bad again because you've fallen for the lie and you feel that demoralization again only for the disease to come back again and tell you how it can help everything if you just use. Probably the first drug that I ever had any interaction with was alcohol, but really the first drugs that I really ever did uh, was marijuana. I connected with one of the neighborhood kids and uh, started smoking weed. How old are you at this time? Sixth grade, so about 12 years old. Many addictions start at a young age. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, a study finds that some children are already abusing drugs at 12 or 13, which then suggests that many begin even earlier. During these young stages of development, children and teenagers are particularly susceptible to becoming addicted to drugs and alcohol. Other factors which play a role in addiction include their environment, home life, stress, and other influences, as well as biology, as addiction can be hereditary. So I guess I should ask, what kinds of drugs did you take? Would you like an <laughs> inventory of all the drugs that I used? Sure, go ahead. In the beginning, it was marijuana and alcohol, cross tops, pink hearts, 357 magnums, gators, LSD and mushrooms, MDMA, cranks, so meth amphetamines, and then cocaine, later into crystal meth, which also is methamphetamines. Early on, it's fun. I mean, I can't say that I ever began using because it wasn't fun. But very quickly, that fun becomes a need. And so I can say in the latter part of my using, especially that the feeling, the urge to use is, I don't necessarily want to, but I have to. And how long were you in this addiction? For over 25 years. So what caused you to leave your addiction? Crossing every boundary, uh, doing everything that I said I would never do cashing in all those morals and values. I mean, literally living in a tent isolated from everyone. Left all my stuff there and went to Portland and went to Portland Rescue Mission and was fortunate enough to get a bed. Got into some clean and sober housing and haven't looked back since. And I've been clean since. Addiction affects us in more ways than we know and is more common than we think from Oregon's economy, to society, and even our personal lives. North Point Recovery finds it has been estimated that the substance abuse cost in Oregon exceeds $6 billion a year. In an itemized list, they broke it down. In lost earnings, $2 billion was lost directly because of substance abuse, $1.2 billion in criminal conduct and victimization, $978 million in premature deaths. In healthcare, 506 million in medical costs and insurance administration, 307 million in alcohol and drug services. In other costs, 656 million dollars to criminal justice, 271 million to automobile crashes and damage, and 26 million to fire damage, and finally 13 million to welfare. These astronomical amounts are paid for by everyone in Oregon. It doesn't matter if you reside in tiny towns or larger metropolitan areas like Portland, addiction will touch your life in some way. Officers say inside Lamore's apartment they found crack cocaine, marijuana, firearms, and ammunition. Investigators also say they've made several We asked a local officer via text message about the prevalence of drug and alcohol related crime in the area. He estimates that 35 to 40 percent of the calls he receives involves drugs or alcohol. My actions were ruled by the need for drugs, to use drugs, and in order to use the drugs, then I had to sell the drugs, so I had to cop the drugs and sell the drugs. In the later times when that stopped working, led to other acts of crime. In a poll conducted at Mount Hood Community College, Approximately 66% of students we interviewed said that they knew someone who was addicted to drugs or alcohol. 
We have already taken the first steps to learning how to help those with drugs and alcohol abuse. It began with understanding. Understanding that alcoholism and drug abuse is a disease. Susceptibility varies on several factors such as environment, biology, and influences. And those with alcoholism or drug abuse can't simply quit. By educating ourselves on, and those around us, we are one step closer to making a real impact. Education is a really big thing um, for somebody who does want to learn or want to know how to help somebody who's an alcoholic, you know, come to an AA meeting. If you just listen to what people have to say, especially al alcoholics and addicts, I mean, we, we are pretty awesome people once we get sober. The next step requires the cooperation of the Portland areas as a whole to better ourselves as a society and to help those who suffer from addiction more effectively, we suggest implementing more cost-effective treatment centers and proliferating NA and AA communities throughout the Portland area. With the rise in minors becoming addicted to alcohol and drugs, we also suggest establishing treatment centers, NA and AA communities, for children and young teens. I think if treatment centers were more affordable... They are very expensive. Very. Um, like $5,000 a month. Or the lowest one. Right. In my opinion, uh, I do think some people do need rehab because they need to get away and they need to, you know, unwind and especially have a medical detox. But if you look back at history, when it was two people, Bill and Bob, that started AA, mm -hmm. it was just one person helping another person. And in AA, that's, that's what we do. So creating a strong foundation with people that understand what you're going through is, is definitely key. The man that I live with is still an alcoholic. However, now that I not only understand his alcoholism, but have the resources he'll need when he decides to seek help, I'll be waiting to guide him through recovery. I do think that almost every alcoholic and every addict does want help in some way, but the fear of the unknown of what our life would be like, mm -hmm. being sober, and all the stuff that we've done catching up to us is just very, very overwhelming. You know, I still have regrets. I, I feel horrible that I was a bad mother to you. You didn't deserve that. So I'm just thankful that I'm lucky and I'm sober now. And how long have you been sober? Three years and three months. That's good. That is amazing.